So basically, there are two. Uh, uh, we're talking about a curiosity gym as well as mysphere.net. Um, yeah. Yeah. So one basically is for the kids to engage in in the school, and the uh, the other one is for them to create a portfolio of their own. Yes, that's correct. mysphere.net right yes yes and so my all my details are you know on the chat mm -hmm. in case we need to get in touch with you we'll do that sir yes so are you operating um, pan yes, india it, or? it's pan pa india pan india yes yeah not only pan india pan you know and th uh, these solutions um, are are implemented any uh, implementable anywhere in the world, uh, especially now since let's say CBSE schools are in fact there across the world from Japan to UAE or wherever or you know. Mm -hmm. So we you know and the C uh, and uh, the CBSE is talking about having many of these national education for, uh, policy principles. So while the curriculum framework is still being decided, a lot of these principles on design thinking and AI and all have actually already kicked off. And many, many schools, many of your schools, some, some of the principles may already be implementing in this uh, even prior to their, their policy. What we've done is, of course, we've consolidated the policy so that you know it becomes a regular Which recipe. Which yeah. Swapna. Swapna ji, I think uh, your mic is on. Would you like to say something? No, sir. No, nothing, nothing. OK, thank you. So th this can be implemented in all uh, types of schools, or is it particular to urban schools? No, all types of schools. In fact, we've been uh, even successful in, in doing it in, in rural areas and community centers. We, we train the resource person to run the program, basically. Right. Right. And so then it, it is uh, uh, it's very scalable for uh, schools at every level. So we work with CBSC schools, IB, IB schools, IGC schools, ICSC schools, state board schools, and then even 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 uh, rural community centers. So our, our, our range is quite, quite vast. So what exactly is the learning outcome of a kid? I, I mean, for I, I'm talking about uh, classes. Let's say the lower classes, one to five. Yeah. So see, really what we are focusing on at Curiosity Gym, and that's why the name Curiosity Gym, if you look, look back at it, sometimes people get confused. What is this Curiosity Gym, right? So just like one goes to a health gym to, to build your biceps or build your muscles or whatever, right? One one can actually with kids are born they're actually born curious and then over time unfortunately as we go older you know the curiosity starts waning you know off, you know from at two it's is almost the peak actually when they're two years old then from two to 12 it, it's very high and then after 12 it actually starts reducing a bit and then you know, uh, so the uh, the focus of our, our activity based sessions or experiential learning sessions is to get that curiosity alive. And just like that video depicted, you see the spark in the student, right? And that ability to think, why did it not work? So for example, one student showed a pencil floating in air. OK, yeah. so while the video showed in air, for him to make that pencil float in air, it probably took him about half an hour to make it float. For 29 minutes of the half an hour, it wasn't floating. It was falling down, right? So that trial and error method and saying why is this you know the, you know there are different forces in different directions there's gravity there's magnetism all of that happening happening the north and south pole so you know the alignment has to be absolutely proper so there are lots of learning in that one small exercise and irrespective of whether the third can third son and kid doing making a dragonfly or a or a 11th grader making a smart gadget for waste management right the ability to think and sometimes it's referred to as design thinking you know where where one looks at uh, you know the different stakeholders that that are also you know affected by the problem so we have critical thinking design thinking all as part of the science maths and activity based learning right and we incorporate technologies like ai robotics 3d printing all of that as well uh, our own uh, our background is from engineering i'm from iit bombay i've been abroad for many years 
And so, you know, and my co-founder is also a head of R&D. So we have a very rich curriculum that we've built over the last seven years with people from Homi Baba and, and others also part of the staff. So we have a very rich science and engineering curriculum that we put together to bring STEAM to life. Yeah, right. Yeah, Nirupam has asked a question. She says, how does MySphere help to get internship? OK, so MySphere is a platform where you know uh, both corporates or internship providers or even colleges, right? Or even schools, if you have, if you, for example, you know, want, want to post an internship within your school or within your college or within a corporate, you can post it there and students can apply for those internship on the platform. So it's a, it's, it's a platform where, you know, it can, it can match mix internship providers as well as the people, you know, who want to apply for the internship. Now, as part of your portfolio building, you're making a CV that, you know, if there are 20 people in your class and the three openings for the internship the person who is giving the internship will say okay what have you done can you have you reflected on something show me that you that you can think you know show me that you can reflect and so so that's how the platform comes into play so that was so nice hearing from you and uh, actually touched our soul and our hearts i think we have uh, members of the audience who would like to ask questions i'm opening the floor in case there's someone who wants me to read out their question, that's OK. But if you would just, if you would just raise your hands, I'll be able to uh, give you. So anyway, by the time they're getting, Girish Nayaji wants to speak. Please, sir, unmute yourself. I'd like to uh, ask uh, uh, ma'am. Uh, you talked about having uh, children, you know, work, and that's an excellent point, right? How do you think that India as a country can can work together to, you know, have volunteer assignments, internship assignments, and get that culture of dignity of labor at a larger way? You know, we're such a large country, and you're absolutely right. Kids are sometimes perhaps, you know, uh, becoming all, you know, only only connected to the phones or or digital media, you know, and uh, it's very, very important that the point you brought up and it can help solve many uh, societal ills, perhaps, you know, and including mental health issues, fa even family issues, so, you know, and that thing of brother bro brotherhood across, you know, strata of society, I think uh, can, can be covered with many of that. But how, how, how can one actually go about doing that in a larger way? Mr. Nair, Japan does that. Japanese, every child before they leave the class, they yes. put the class in order. Right. In fact, I've seen some films on uh, where children, they're putting everything right, leaving everything in order and tidy the yeah. way it was. And they do it themselves and they do it collectively. That means you're bringing collaboration. Yes. And you're bringing sanitation, hygiene, dignity of labor. They do everything together. Yes. And the teacher is with them. And yes. if you do this from the child level, childhood level, nursery level, begin from nursery. You'll see the change. Then they will do the tidy same thing back home. They'll be helpful at home. They'll also leave their rooms tidy. Same thing, they'll take those value systems at home. But we don't teach them school, that we leave them the way they are. So, and Shabdan was Gandhiji's, see, our own, and this is our own legacy. Shramdan was given to the country by Gandhiji himself. So we were, we remember Gandhiji, but we don't remember many of the ideals he practiced and he didn't preach, he practiced. Yes. So if we bring this kind of dignity of labor, putting things back in order, take as respect things for others, leaving is consideration. You see all the value systems, consideration yes. for others, being tidy, personally disciplined, respectful, collaboration, teamwork, all those qualities, all they're coming now. But they can't be taught by uh, by books and preaching. That's why I thought, let me show you something rather than I speaking. Yes. Let's speak for itself. I, when I was in police training college, my police trainees were doing shramdan. I taught them shramdan, and they were leaving their classes when they would go home because that was my condition that you can policemen were never asked to go home to your families. Training was considered like like a boot camp. You can't go home. I said, no, you will go home. So every Friday evening, I should let them go home. But put your house in order. They should leave or orderly classrooms, clean chairs, 
they had adopted portions of the lawns in my police training called in Jaroda Kala, and everybody tended to their responsibility and left happily, came back to fresh, okay. very yeah. fresh institution every morning, uh, a Sunday night. By Monday morning, the classes begin. See, they loved. So it was like, I, I do this for you, you do this, and they learned it. Yes. Years we did it, and it worked. The, the lawns were clean, neat, full of flowers. They tended it. They, it's a sense of ownership. They got a sense of ownership. I think that's the key. Right. That was so right. nice. Thank you so much. I have another question for you. If So in your book, you uh, an introduction to your book, you write, um, I never accepted inequality, injustice, and servitude. I created resources and found solutions. Do we have a solutions that all schools will be equal one day? We can be equal in value systems. We can be equal in our uh, mission, missionary zeal. We can be equal in one thing. Why another country, like if supposing going back to Japan, are they equal in this? Certain value systems is equal. They are perennial. They are fundamental. They are natural. They are laws of nature. You will reap as you sow. So if everybody, every teacher, every school starts saying, we will reap as we sow. And what are we sowing? Value systems are, are permanent. They're natural. Yes. Yes. So they're, they're, where's the debate? To, uh, can you be dishonest? Is being dishonest the right thing? Telling lies the right thing? Remaining dirty is the right thing? Being cheating is the right thing? Is leaving un, uh, uh, grabbing and being selfish the right thing? I think these are and not debatable. So if all teachers believe in these value systems and start instilling them at the right from the nursery level, all schools will grow up with, with basic fundamental values. And if they continue to get nurtured, reinforced in home, at home, and then subsequently to the classes up to the 12th standard, and then the university takes over in its own way, why would we not have a population which will have values as its fundamentals? So for academics, we have uh, in examination, uh, what kind of an examination would you, uh, will you um, suggest for values? So that we can give kids a value report card. Maybe giving, huh, what have you, what are the extra, what have you given? What have you given? What have you done for others? That could be the test. What have you done for others? While you were studying, while you were doing, he said, I did this at home, or I did this for my grandparents or i did this for a society what have you given the giving not taking yeah that's 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 so true actually we, there's very less that uh, we've actually given and we've not even taught children how to you know to uh, to serve and to give uh, so what give, is your take? giving giving can be in kind and also in spirit remember mm -hmm. kindness it's not in money children may not have money but children have kindness, children have respect, children have gratitude. They can look after their elderly parent and say, I looked after my elderly parent after I returned from school. I tended to my home like this, or I tended to, or I taught my younger sister this. It's giving. It's giving where they thought they could give. So it's not a question of money at the moment. Uh, so do you think that we should begin with uh, teachers training and teaching them how to make children more um, uh, more full of values and with the ability to give? Absolutely. I think we, that's where the parent, both parental, teachers, teachers are also, parents are also teachers and teachers also. If they adopt certain things that these are th necessary things, but they must participate. Ch teachers have to part, not order them to do so that it's not as their job. It's our, it's love of doing it. Playing also together, singing together, dancing together, cleaning together, eating together. I think all these things is togetherness. Uh, so, madam, if you write a book on bringing up your kids, uh, what would your first paragraph be? The first is to make the child a better, a good, sound human being who learns a skill and becomes successful in the application of skills for larger good. So, first thing is humanize this boy, child. Teach all human values alongside as the child grows. There was another clip I showed you is we take them to Europe. Why don't we? Do? That's why Prime Minister is encouraging local tourism, India tourism. Know your country before you know others. 
So mm -hmm. see, we could we could Vande Matram trains could be run for youth. There could be a Vande Matram national integration train which takes the northern children to the south and south to the north. No India. We can do these kinds of integrative trains. So that could be called national integration youth trains, where the youth. The other day, I was speaking in Trivandrum uh, in a school, and that uh, I asked the children, uh, raise your hands. How many? And I told them, I've come all the way from Delhi to speak to you, children. How many of you have seen Red Fort? Have you seen India Gate? How many of you children you've been to uh, uh, Delhi? You would believe me, me not. Not one hand went up. Not one child had seen Delhi. And there were about at least more than 2,000 children before me. Not one had seen New Delhi. They do not know India. Many southern children do not know India. Similarly, northern children do not know South. Mm -hmm. How will be? They do not know Northeast. So Northeast, they don't know. The uh, South, they do not know. North, they do not know. How will we look at national integration? So we could have children's, we could have Vande Matra, Vande, Vande Bharat trains, national integration, bringing students coming together from North and South, learning each other's language as they travel, each other's culture, each other's food. And that's what will really bring in national integration. So I would only humanize. So uh, I would look at humanizing my child and also becoming value based, knowing Indian history, knowing Indian civilization, learning the power of prayer, understanding Indian culture. Yeah, thank you so much. And if you take uh, one last question, will that be OK? Yes, of course. Yeah. So basically, um, when we are talking about children's discipline, how do we ch keep children out of crime and out of drugs or anything like that? Uh, safe behavior at home. It's all about culture. You see, these are all acquired. Crime is acquired. You're not born. It's acquired from the environment, which means if the media is not going to change or the media will continue to do what it's doing, it's it's their, their, their compulsion, then we know what the children understand, the discerning, that that's wrong. They reject it. After all, all of us don't take to crime. All our children don't take to crime. Few do. Few get influenced. That means they were not. They did not understand the. They could not discern the difference between right and wrong and rejection. The the, the it's called the nutrition N. The uh, the vitamin N. Vitamin N is the vitamin N is learning to say no, no to drugs, no to crime, no to bad behavior. So once they start rejecting, even if the media is projecting, media will have no takers. Wonderful. That was so nice to hear that vitamin N. And I think I'm going to start preaching about vitamin N from now onwards. Uh, thank you so much for your valuable time. And uh, we would love to keep hearing you, but I'm sure you are you already have prior assignments. Thank you, madam. And uh, we are grateful. And on behalf of everyone, I just want to express my gratitude. Thank I you. It was a pleasure you. hearing you. No, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. I, I made sure that in the shortest time, I give you the maximum I can. And that's what I tried to do. I dug into my library because I just love documentation and I store everything which, which, which is close to my heart. So when you gave me this opportunity, it dug into my doc documentation and gave you what I preserved carefully. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. That was so nice when you have the moderator muting himself. Great. So there is already a question over there by Arun. It says, how does one validate the future readiness quotient? Would you like to take that? Sure. So, uh, you know, our uh, entire project, our entire ZQ dimensions and skills is based on extensive research done in terms of future readiness. And for that, we've taken international studies like I mentioned, this is done by our UK-based partner, QAI. And uh, this research has been carrying on for about three years now. So that is what it is based on, and hence it is validated. And I see another question that says, why does curiosity start reducing after the age of 12? Uh, I know curiosity reduces with age because cognitive ability reduces with age. But at the age of 12, I think it's more of a choice. I think it's because of the kind of fo shifted focus that teenagers have at that age, or it is also likely to be external forces, which is uh, 
possibly the environment which reduces curiosity because they're focused on academic results, they're focused on what is going to get them good jobs, and that possibly limits their curiosity a little bit. Yeah, so Girish, would you like to add something to it, sir? Yeah, uh, I think there are studies which which do uh, show that, you know, curiosity when, reduces. Okay, yeah, curiosity reduces and having worked with many school uh, schools and many children over the past decade, we, we, we you see that in the classroom, you know, the fifth and sixth standard uh, student is actually more, more, more interactive in class than the as they go to the seventh, eighth through puberty and things and then it starts picking up again. So there's a a slight kind of S curve, and I'm sure you know. In fact, if you all have done impact analysis of, across grades, you know you may have found that as well. And th those are what our studies have, have shown. Uh, and also, it it also uh, I think over time, uh, see when, when one is born, one is not really worried about you know uh, if you put your hand in, in something, you know you know, you have to discover that if you put a hand on a hot plate, you're going to get burnt, right? And and part of learning from the environment is actually experimenting and doing that. And we are naturally are born that way, right? Uh, but then society as parents, as teachers, and this thing, we always say, don't do this, you know? And and part of, I think, what even uh, Dr. Kiran Bailey said is, you know, we got to expose kids to lots of things, including work environments, internship environments, volunteering, you know, and that those kind of environments actually help, you know, keep the curiosity alive, keep and keep on not only curiosity right it's all aspects of learning right the interaction the teamwork the the helping dignity of labor uh, um, you know help helping cross economic strata of society right so it's not only that you're waiting for your maid or somebody else in the house to do some work for you you clean up after yourself in the in the classroom or at home and and you know maybe you help your parent do some of the cooking Right, so all of those those uh, those things uh, come together, and, and and in curiosity itself, I think. Uh, see, a lot of the jobs of the future are going to be different, and I think we we've all read that wor the World Economic Forum has has talked about it, and many many of the uh, principals on the call probably know that, right? So what is going to be important is not, and we are moving from a knowledge economy to a skills economy, right? So what used to work for our generation, you know, and I'm 50 plus, right? And I, you know, perhaps some of the speakers and principals also, right? Will not work for the, for the, for, for the kids we're teaching, right? Because, you know, uh, with, with the, uh, the information revolution, a lot of that knowledge is not necessarily, is going to be at the fingertips, right? And so uh, what is going to be important is the skill and the, in fact, the curiosity to keep asking questions. How do you even ask questions, right? And that imagining your question is really important. Absolutely. I completely agree with what you're saying. And I think, you know, uh, you really are uh, validating that the environment is what actually makes the students reduce curiosity. I don't think yes. it is something that they are inherently, uh, yes. you know, uh, if, uh, by logic, yes, yes. curiosity doesn't yes. reduce. But it is yes, the environment sir. and the change environment. of focus. You know, yes. these are the two points which probably impact their curiosity. Yes. Thank you so much, both of you. And uh, there's a question that comes from Asha over here. And she says, uh, when you say redefining curriculum, what and how do you do that? Uh, this is for, um, I think, yeah. So, Anis, you can take that or? Sure. Pai, would you like to take that? Go ahead. So, okay. yeah. Uh, right. So, I think when we talk about redefining curriculum, we're really looking at, you know, what even NEP is saying that you need to redefine your curriculum in a manner so that it is holistic and future readiness skills are kind of incorporated in their classroom. So you can't change the curriculum that is set by the boards, that's for sure. And that is, you know, uh, uh, there's nothing, you can't do anything about that. But what you can do is readjust or retweak the curriculum in such a manner that you incorporate additional skills into the classroom. Yeah, for example, critical thinking should be something that should be focused on when you're teaching subjects it's not just about you know, having a separate class on 21st century skills yes. they have to be woven into the delivery of the school curriculum and we give you guidance and support with that and that's i think exactly what nep is also asking schools to do today yeah. yes so with that i come to a wrap-up in case there's anyone else who wants to ask a question or i'll wrap up
So once again, thank you everyone for being over here. We are really delighted to have our resource persons today. It was really wonderful hearing all of you and your views. Um, we'd be delighted to take notes and I'm sure we all will be getting in touch with you because I think you've written down your, um, I mean, your addresses over here. So we will definitely get back to you and some of us will love to connect with you. Thank you for your precious time. Once again, thank you all the audience over here and we'll be meeting again day after tomorrow. Tomorrow, of course, is a holiday for each one of us and day after tomorrow at 4.30. God bless us all and good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Gish. Bye.